Please welcome Danao Mangestu. Now, you, you probably don't like to have things quoted back at you, but when you, um, when you were in the New Yorker's 20 Under 40 issue and we asked you for uh, a web interview, what were the first uh, works of fiction that really made an impression on you? And you said, On the Road and Catcher in the Rye. So, <laughs> I'm like, you like justify that. I want to go back to, to, that. to, <laughs> to the 15 year old you reading yeah. On the Road and reading Catcher in the Rye and what that experience was. Um, how that influenced you. Yes, gosh, there's so much. <laughs> um, you can start before that. You can, you know, tell well, us the story. a lot of it was, was, was the way in which, like, some the way in which I came to literature, um, you know, which was after going through, like, a, like a, I was fortunate enough to go to a private school because the public schools in our neighborhood were terrible, and in the private school, there were a lot of people who were not happy to have somebody of my skin tone present in some of their classes. Um, and at the same time, I grew up with, with wonderful friends and in a great, very diverse community of, of beautiful young boys who took a very bad path in their life. Um, and oftentimes, that path forced them like, into becoming joining gangs and becoming drug dealers and, um, and strangely, yeah. Um, and there was a sort of split and a rupture that happens at some point in life where you realize you have to, um, one side, one option does not, is not, neither option is sort of viable, right? Like you can't just be angry because people think less of you because of the color of your skin. And at the same time, you can't react to the way the people you've grown up with for so long have chosen to react, right? Like you're, you're obliged to find some private space that's going to only be yours. And literature became that for me. Like books became that, like they, there was like a real moment of sort of like an acute decision to say neither, neither world holds any appeal and somehow books are going to be the only thing that, the only things that will, that will allow me to kind of like be alone and, and be happy with being alone. And those, and those are both narratives that do that, you know? Um, those are both narratives that pride the kind of like iconoclastic individual that say it's okay to like throw the rest of the world aside and live on your own terms. And, and I love those books for that. I, they were so important to me and fundamental to me to think that like you don't need to, to adhere to all the other rules and you cannot be angry and you cannot be, um, and you cannot be alone. You cannot feel, you can be alone but not feel sort of like sad about being alone. Um, that there's something sort of, pro something perhaps wonderful can be gained out of that. Mm -hmm. um, and those books more than anything, they, they made me want to read more books. You know, those were books that like, that also had references to books, that talked about literature as an idea, um, that talked about the sort of like, there was a discourse of narrative inside of both of those texts that kept propelling me onto other narratives, right? So you go from, from on the road and you start basically working your way through all the beats and you start working your way from the beats into sort of like earlier romantic poetry, right? So then suddenly you're thinking about, um, Yeats, and then you keep going back, and then you start reading Catch in the Rye, and you're thinking about, like, I don't remember, but yeah. <laughs> and were you thinking about being a writer? Um, I, was, I was thinking about, about the solace that comes from great prose. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I had the courage to say that I wanted to be a writer for a very long time. Um, I thought that reading a really great sentence gave me more hope and peace than just about anything else in the world. And if you could participate in doing that, then wonderful, <coughs> great, you know? Like, I would read those things and I knew that I would want to, like, automatically start scribbling away. Um, but I didn't, I didn't need to think that I would be a writer. I think I probably, I, th I knew it, but I would have never said that it was something that I was going to do, you know? It felt almost like I had so much respect for what was happening every time I opened up a book. Um, to think that you were going to participate in that conversation felt like just a little bit too arrogant for me. So it was more like, I just wanted to keep reading and feeling alive every time I read a book. 